the thing that I bring to the school board is, is first of all, I have a passion for education. Mm -hmm. And my passion of education extends to my children. And right. I have seven children, uh, three of which have, have graduated from Dixon Public Schools and have moved on. But, but uh, um, I still have four kids that are uh, in high, uh, I have one graduating from high school this year, and then I have three kids in the middle school. So I have a vested interest in, in what happens with uh, the schools. Plus, I bring um, the experience that I have in, in working with the Illinois Farm Bureau and country insurance and also being a township supervisor. I understand property taxes. I understand how it works. I understand what levy is. I understand budgets. So I bring that strength uh, to the board. Okay. Now the uh, education association in the district will soon begin negotiating the contract with teachers. Mm -hmm. During the most recent negotiations, there was a work stoppage. Right. How can this be avoided, and what's the school board's role in teaching negotiations? Sure. The uh, um, negotiations are always tough, and and the way the process is set up, and and I knew this coming onto the board, but you don't appreciate it until you actually get involved. The process is set up to be adversarial which is unfortunate. And so it, it makes it hard uh, for the sides to really sit down and, and talk honestly of what the, uh, the teacher's wants are and, what the, um, and, and where the school board is. Um, I've already had, had discussions with lead negotiator um, uh, Dolph Ricks. Uh, we've, he and I have, have talked and, and we have some understanding that we need to sit down um, uh, together with, with uh, and, and talk about where the finances are of the school district so the teachers have a very good understanding of the budget pressures that the board is facing and we also need to hear from the teachers of what they're looking for in regards to what their needs are uh, as, as the contract moves forward. So, so we need to have some good honest discussion leading up to the negotiations. So that's what I'm hoping to accomplish. What are your thoughts on the current school buildings in the district, and do you believe the high school should continue to be in its current location? Yeah, as far as, far as the, the buildings, uh, I was chairman of the strategic planning committee that, that uh, spent a little over a year in looking at our facilities. And I think we've talked about it, and, and the paper is published, that the, the results out of that has been that the committee um, informed the board that the, our buildings do not meet 21st century educational standards. Mm -hmm. So... Having said that, you know, then, then you know, that, that was the easy part. The hard part is, is trying to make, setting the priorities and making the decisions of how we move the school district forward. As far as the high school staying where the high school is, that's going to be a community decision. That's not necessarily going to be a board decision. That's a community decision. Um, from, from, from a school board perspective, um, if the community wants us to spend the money that's going to be required to keep the high school where it is, that's what we'll do. If, if, the, if the community tells us that, that what we're going to need to do is to move away from that site and go off site and, and look towards the future, you know, and set up a, a site for the next century of, of, of learning for Dixon Public Schools, that's what we'll do. But it's going to be a community decision. And that's why we set up in, in the, with the master facilities plan. We've set up meetings and, and, and surveys, and now we're, we've got a Facebook page. We're looking for input from the community to help us make those decisions. What can be done to improve communication between the teachers, school officials, and the board? You know, I think <clears throat> I serve on the public, the uh, professional relations committee. Um, uh, I, I, think, I think we have um, plenty of means to, to communicate, for everyone to communicate together. Uh, what happens is that sometimes um, we talk past each other and we don't actually talk to each other, mm -hmm. if, you, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, I think we need to improve listening skills. I think we need to improve, you know, so that we're all, all listening to what we're all saying. Uh, to each other and and so it's not in my view it's not so much uh, different methods of communication it's just that we need to improve the the communication that we're already doing mm -hmm. state budget cuts could mean reduced funding for Dixon schools if that happens budget cuts may have to be made in your opinion what are some things the school district could cut or do without <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine, the last ever since I stepped on the board, 
uh, we've been cutting budgets. And, and so we don't have really a budget issue in regards to expenditures because now we're to the point where where programs are really going to see, be adversely affected. We have a revenue issue. Uh, the state has been has been cut a, has the state aid formula has been cut 34 percent. We've lost 11 percent of our EAV locally. We need to the state needs to get their house in order. The 300 million dollars in Rounders budget is is a start, but we need to have increased aid from the state.